Hey everybody, this is Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look at Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And the reason being is that it has an anti-hack in it in which it scans your process list and it's actually looking for Cheat Engine. And when it discovers Cheat Engine has been opened up, boom, crashes the game down. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But first of all, and I started off on my good pal, Stephen Chapman. He is also my friend, a great teacher, and also my mentor as well as to many others. And this is based off his lesson. I'm going to scroll on down the page just a bit. Sniper Elite 4, in which he shows you how to do this very process that we're going to be doing today. All right, so I want you to go watch this video, it's great stuff. This is where I learned it, and uh, basically, I'm just taking it to a point where we're actually going to be patching the file to where we can just bring up that file every single time and it, it continuously work for us. Now, this is if you don't have a lot of coding experience to be able to write your own little program that will suspend threads or or anything like that. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. Uh, we're just going to create a bypass in the executable itself and we're going to patch that executable and it's very similar to how they crack software and patch executables so keep that in mind that, that we're using some shady techniques kind of in a way but to use it for our own benefits all right <laughs> but uh, also I want to throw a shout out to the creator of 64 debugger and when I scroll down the page, he commented on Stephen's guide here and just offered a few little suggestions and tips uh, on what you can also look for in symbol lists and everything, which we will be taking a look at in just a moment. And I want to throw out a shout out to Duncan for a great, great tool that he has created. I enjoy using it. I'm still learning it. I'm a noob at it very much a noob at it but you know when I learn something I like to share with you guys and I want to give credit where credit is due to my friend Stephen Chapman for his great lesson on bypassing this process checker and to Duncan as well for the creation of 64 debugger which we will be using to do that so let me uh, go ahead and save what I got so far and I'll be right back with you okay guys well we need to do a little bit of setup before we start uh, I'm going to move Cheat Engine over here, and there's a reason I'm doing that right now so you can see what goes on. And uh need to do a little bit of setup now. And similar to cracking software and everything, what they do is they go in there and mess with uh, the programming of the executable, and then they patch the executable, and that's where you get your software cracks a lot of the times. They also do DLLs and other things like that, but it's basically done the same way, is they're patching those things. And in this case, we're going to be patching the Resident Evil 7 executable. As you can see, it's called re7.exe. So when you go to do things like this, you want to save the original. Just copy and paste it like onto your desktop or into another folder or something like that. Just have an extra backup copy somewhere. We're also going to be saving this one as well. But you also want to make sure that... You just take one out of the folder just put it somewhere where you know where it's set that way if you mess up you still have the original you don't have to go back and reinstall the entire game again so just make sure that you have things squared away before uh, you get started in messing around in the executable and patching files and things like that I always make sure to make backups of those okay extremely important in anything you do whether it's hacking games cracking software or whatever you're messing with Make backups first. Always do that. Good rule of thumb. All right. So what we want to do is I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to show you what it does when it when we try to bring up Cheat Engine. It's scanning the process list and as soon as it sees Cheat Engine signature file, it slams you right down. So I'm just going to bring it up. It may even do it while it's loading, but I'm going to bring it up to the title screen. <coughs> Because that's where we're going to be looking at things. And I'll just keep check out things later. I don't think I got but a couple of DLCs for it anyway. Alright, so we're at the title screen. And we want to go ahead and start, before we start our game, and bring Cheat Engine up. And this happens. We bring it up. Then boom, we get this message right here. Error. This game is incompatible with Cheat Engine. Please close Cheat Engine and restart the game. Well, we do know what's causing that, and if you go watch Steven's lesson, you will get uh, what I'm going to be doing here in a lot better detail and a lot slower. Since he's already taught it, I'm just going to kind of breeze over 
what he's doing and get directly to patching it up and having Cheat Engine be able to work for us. So let's go ahead and close Cheat Engine back down. And uh, also, I want to bring up 60, my 64 debugger. Now, if you're not sure, it has a 32-bit and a 64-bit and a debugger. And if you're not sure, you need to open up the correct one per the process that you're running. Resident Evil 7 is a 64-bit game. If you're not really sure, you can go to Properties. There are other ways to do this, but you can go to Compatibility. Click on Run This com uh, Program in Compatibility Mode 4 and just take a look. If it only goes back to Windows Vista and no further, then it's 64-bit. If it goes all the way back to Windows 95 and you have a bunch of other options, then it's 32-bit. So we know this is a 64-bit game. There are other ways to do this and better ways, and I'm just not really getting into that because I don't care, all right? But we know this is a 64-bit game, so we need to open up the 64-bit debugger. And that's what we're going to be using. So I want to bring this back up all the way. And then we're going to attach it to 64 debugger. So bear with me a moment while that loads back up. Okay, so let's let it get back to here. And here we go. And what I want to do is click on File, and we're going to attach it to the process. I love this little program. It's really good. I'm still a noob at it. I'm, I know very little about it, but I'm learning. And like I say, you know, when I learn something, I like to share it with you guys. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is branch out from just being confined with Cheat Engine. You know, start using, utilizing these other debugger programs and disassemblers and everything that you can use in combination with Cheat Engine, and to be able to help you further be able to hack games a lot better and easier when you got different tools that you can use that maybe Cheat Engine just doesn't have equipped very well or, or something like that. The Cheat Engine is very powerful and does a great job. All right, so now that we got the game loaded up, what we want to do is we're going to travel over here to Symbols and we want to make sure that we have it selected on the correct module. Before we start anything else, you're going to double click on it and then we're going to click symbols again and this is every symbol reference that is the game is utilizing okay now when we go over here to uh, Steven's channel he he recommends a symbol that he that worked for him and there are other symbols that I've used as well because you may not get the same symbol names in every single game and may have different things but there's different symbols you can use and what we're trying to do let me bring this back over here, is we're trying to find the correct thread to suspend and keep suspended that is activating that process scanner. If we suspend the correct thread, that process scanner will never activate and we can bring up Cheat Engine and use it as many times as we want to. And these are the threads the game is running. One of these is in control of handling our process scanner and that's what we're trying to find. So just to give you a little heads up on that. And uh, the creator of the 64 debugger, Duncan, had, you know, gave a couple little suggestions down here. He says you can look for symbols called Enum Process and also Create Tool Help 32 Snapshot. Well, me being the noob that I am, I need to look these things up. And so you can do that by going to Google, put in there, and you can find information at the Microsoft site and we see here the create tool help 32 snapshot function it takes a snapshot of specified processes keyword being processes as well as heaps modules and threads used by these processes and also he says also you could check for enum processes which basically retrieves the process identifier for each process object in the system so we know that those two definitely correspond with the thread that is scanning our process list. So those are good ones to use. And those are basically ones you might want to start with. I also found the thread, the correct thread, using other means. And you can search down here. You just click on that and just say, I want to find the create tool help. And there it is. It actually uses that particular process, so we can use that to find the thread we're looking for. Does it use enum processes? I don't know. This uh, enum 
process and no that one's not in there and you can also go down your symbol list and manually search for these things you can also just type in the word process and it will bring up everything that uses the word processes and I'll show you one that I find success I find it successfully also is get current process ID and I haven't really tried other avenues uh, but what you want is one that you can put a breakpoint on that the the butter will keep running and not just keep pausing every few seconds so that's what we're looking for and what I've used is get current process ID so let's go back to the game and here's the symbol we're looking for get current process ID and we're going to toggle a breakpoint here is our breakpoints tab so it shows us that our breakpoint right here get current process ID what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these others get them out of the way for now I'm going to disable this I'm going to go back to the game and we're just going to run make sure it keeps running I'm going to re-enable it and it may keep pausing a few times here and if it keeps doing that a lot then try another symbol but you want it continuously running. You only want it to break when you try to bring up cheat engine. That's the way we're going to find the correct thread. So what we're going to do is let me go ahead and bring up cheat engine and let's just see what happens. Okay, cheat engine is brought up and it is paused. That means it has broke. So let's just go take a look. We'll go back to our symbols. I right click on it and we want to follow this in this assembler first. And we can see right here, get current process ID. Here is the beginning of that function right here. So let's see what thread, since it's paused right here, right when it starts, get the current process ID. Let's see what thread it is on while it does that. And we see it's this one. And there are many different ways you can get this thread. Now, when, once I start, the, this back up the game's going to go ahead and crash on down regardless of what I do right now okay so what I want to do is I want to copy the information on that thread so we can find it again so I'm just going to go down here to copy and line I'm going to bring up a brand new fresh notepad and you want to do this a couple of times also so you can compare the two and see anything that may be alike and the third time you'll know how to find it a lot better so, and we see also we can look at priority as the lowest, and that's what we're going to do. Normally, you would just do this entire process again, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and close Cheat Engine back down, and we're going to go ahead and stop the process. It's going to close everything back on down. We're going to bring this back up. And when you are using these type methods, and even if you actually got into software cracking, you're going to be bringing these up a ton of times and closing them down and bringing them back up, using tons of breakpoints to find your way through the coding to what you need to find. So this is a very normal process. It can be tedious. It can be aggravating. So keep that in mind also. All right. So let's get back to that title screen. And while it's doing that, let me save what I got so it's just not constantly recording and that way I can break it up in parts. I'll be right back with you. Okay, now that I got it saved, now we're going to do that process one more time. And I'm going to do it a little differently this time. I'm going to use the suggestion by Duncan, the creator of 64 Debugger. And we're going to use one of the symbols he recommended. And we're going to see if it takes us to that exact same thread that we were looking for for and we can tell already which one it is because it also just is the only one that has the lowest priority there it is right here but we're but we don't know that because it ain't always going to be that way so let's pretend like we don't know what thread it is anymore things have changed and we got to find it one more time so we can compare our notes okay so let's go back to our symbols list we're going to reattach the module of RE7 which is Resident Evil 7 double click on it go back to symbols and we're going to try the one we found earlier create uh, the tool 32 snapshot or help 32 snapshot that Duncan recommended using and let's go back to my breakpoints list it will keep your current breakpoints even the one that you had originally and we want to disable that and I'm just going to go ahead and remove it altogether and here's the 
tool help 32 snapshot and I'm going to toggle a breakpoint on that make sure that it's over here so there we go let's go ahead and run past exceptions make sure it's continuously running and let's bring up cheat engine and we got another break in here so let's uh, Come back over to here in our symbols and let's follow that in the disassembler and here's where the create tool 32 snapshot has broke and let's see what thread it broke with i want you to take a look same thing lowest we're going to copy the information so we use two different symbols to find the same exact thread so you're not limited to what you use try several of them out you know and see if it gets you where you need to be and we're going to copy this information but are we doing this in vain we haven't even tested this yet how do we know that's the correct thread in the first place well that's where we should have tested it first by suspending the thread so we're going to bring it up for number three but we do have information we need I kind of bypassed the step by accident so pretend that we did this step third okay <laughs> but uh, let me go ahead and close everything back down and I'm going to show you this works so I'm going to stop that, bring it back up. Now that we know the correct thread, it keeps stopping on that thread. Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to close tuning it back down. Close it back down. Now bring it back up. We needed to do it twice. We needed to do it twice because we didn't know that was the correct thread. If we suspended it then, we would not have known. But now we got information to know both of those are carrying us to something that's scanning our processes. Now we need to test the thread to make sure that is the correct one. And what we do is we look at both the times that we have successfully found that thread and look for anything that may be alike. You see the entry point is always the same right here. So obviously that may be a static location. We also see the TEB maybe is also the same. The instruction pointer is different and we see priority is always the same lowest and that was the only lowest out of all the priorities but we have several ways we can find that again okay we can find that thread again by looking for these things that remain the same all right let's go back over to bring all everything back up let's go back to the title screen let's go ahead and load this up attach now that we have the information of the thread we were looking for, we can go ahead and get rid of our breakpoints. Just remove them. We don't need those. And just continue running like normal. And we want to go over here to our thread. And we can use either way. And we can see right here, lowest priority. Let's check our entry point location. Uh, 14BA. Or excuse me, I'm sorry. 14B4A6580. 4B4A65A0, that's it right there. Now what we want to do is we want to suspend the thread. Suspend it. There it goes, suspended. Now let's see if the game will allow us to bring up Cheat Engine. If it does, then we found the correct thread. And we did. Take a look. Can we attach it to the game? Here you just kind of want to test it a little bit, load my associated table, and you can see I've already got some codes for it already. And we see it's working. It's attached to the game. The game's still running. It's not closing down, and boom, there we go. Now we're on to step number four. We're going to go ahead and patch this. We're going to patch this right here. So what I'm going to do is go to thread entry. Right-click on the thread and go to thread entry. And that will carry us to the very beginning entry point. And I put that in myself. That is the entry point of the thread location. Now, if you remember, and I'll put it up here in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, we went through different call structure functions. And anything that was being called to, we would put a return at the very top of it to keep it from running that particular call. And send it back right where it came from. Well, we're basically going to do the same thing here. And this is what we're doing, but we're going to patch it. We're going to patch it to the executable. 
So we see that this is the entry point right here, and we're going to patch these bytes with the correct return. We're going to make this into a return, and we're going to knock out the rest of these bytes. So what is a return anyway? Well, you can look it up online. You can look it up in 64 Debugger. Just put in return in Google, in hex. I put R-E-T in hex, and it Googles up. This is the page it sends you to and you can see here C3, CB, C2, CA. Uh, you can see what they're all about. Uh, C3 is recognized as near return to calling procedure and that's what we used in Cheat Engine a lot. The uh, byte C3 for the return. That's what it recognizes as return to, to calling procedure. Okay so that's what we're going to use here. So we're going to go ahead and modify this and we're going to make that be a return. So we right click that opcode, go to binary and edit. And it brings up your bytes right here. And just edit the bytes. C3909090090. We know that 090 represents a no operation. Very important to know that. Okay. We click OK. And as you see, it put in our return, the C3 for the return, and no operation. So in the future, when we load this up, that thread will always, whatever it's calling it, it will just make it go right back without actually running. It, basically, this is a roundabout MacGyver way of suspending the thread without having to write your own script. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and patch this to the executable here. Oops, I'm sorry, wrong folder. Put that back down. This right here, this is what's running. This is what we just changed. Now we need to patch it in there. So what we want to do, and that's why we saved earlier the executable. We want to just right click, and you're going to go down here. It says patches. He has programmed a lot of great, great tools in this 64 debugger. And I just love this program. We're going to click on patches right here, and it brings up the executable that we have on. Here are the original bytes, and here's what we changed them to. And it's making sure that we want to patch that file. We're going to go to patch file, and it's going to carry us to that folder where the RE7 is. Now, we can't patch it directly because it's running right now. Okay, so we're going to have to put it somewhere else for the time being and just bring it over to you. So, I'm going to go outside the folder and I'm just going to save it right here just directly outside the folder make sure that we name it the same thing let me go back to it I'm sorry should have done that first where are you there you go let's make sure we name it the same thing re7.exe now let's save it outside of the folder and this will be our patched copy so save and it will say patches applied okay now what I want to do is we can just go ahead and exit this and we can exit the game. It will close, that will close the game down. Make sure we got Cheat Engine down. And let's go back to our Resident Evil folder. Now we want to rename this one. Now this is the original. We did save another copy of it on our desktop, but we want to keep this one also. And I'm just going to rename it something else just to let me know. That, that is the original one. I'm just going to put like a dash original right there. And now we go outside of the game folder and we're going to find our patch. Here's our patch. This is where we saved our patch right here. So we're just going to cut. Go back up to Resident Evil Biohazard and paste. And this is our patched file. This is the, the hacked version of it. It's got that thread suspended. So now we're going to use this to bring up Resident Evil 7. Okay, so double click on it and allow it to bring the game up. Close some of these screens down so I ain't confusing somebody. Remember, this is our patch, that's the original. Let's go back to the uh, Title screen here. Check that out later. Alright, so now we're back and we are running our patched executable. 
let's see if it allows us to bring up cheat engine there you go take a look so now we got a patched version of this we can bring up cheat engine at will we can attach it to the game and we can start using our cheats and using cheat engine like normal and we have totally bypassed uh, the anti-height that's scanning the processes for cheat engine so just another ongoing battle that we're doing. I don't like the fact that they use anti-hats for offline games. I, I do understand that this is also online. And I understand why things like that are in there. But when you're playing offline, uh, anti-hats to me, that's just, a, that's just the devs giving me the finger and I don't like it. <laughs> so this is me giving them right back to them, all right? So I hate that. But anyway, I hope this does help you out. And uh, you can just do this over and over and over again. Make sure that you do keep your originals. Just save it in a folder somewhere. You always want an original uh, as a backup so you don't lose it. But no matter how many times you bring it up now, you'll always, you can just bring up Cheat Engine right off the bat and you should be able just to load up the program. No problem, we're just going to do it one more time. Cheat Engine is up now. And as you can see, it's loading up like normal not closing down we can even attach it to the game and there you go it's no that has totally been bypassed so I do hope that helps you guys I want to thank you guys so much for coming out and con your continued support for Cheat the Game. I want to thank again my great pal Stephen Chapman for his wonderful instruction and lessons on this stuff. This is where I've been learning it and he is a great teacher. Please go take a look at it. He goes into it in a lot of depth and detail in regards to what we did today and uh, you will learn a lot. I also want to thank Duncan for his great 64 debugger program that we are going to be looking at in the future on this channel as well. I love using it and I'm still learning it and got a lot to learn and I'm just got to take it one step at a time. I'm still a noob. <laughs> but also every single one of you that's watching this vid, I want to thank you personally directly from me to you for your continued support, the way you come out here, place a like on the uh, videos that, that really helps me out a lot it lets me know that you're getting what you want out of these videos and you're learning things and I love to see that and it helps encourage me to keep making these things also I want to throw huge shout outs to my partners over at the patreon page these guys uh, contribute uh, their money and time to cheat the game and they help keep <clears throat> cheat the game running and without these guys cheat the game would not be anymore to be honest with you and uh, so I throw a personal thanks out to every single one of these guys also my donators over here uh, if you don't wish to become a patreon partner but you would like to donate I promise you your name will go up here and you'll be on every single shout out also you're still considered a partner and you will receive partner benefits so you know I really appreciate all the financial support that you throw my way it really helps tremendously thank you guys so much and every single one of you if you have not subscribed go ahead and hit the subscribe button and if you hit the little bell there every single time cheat the game comes out with a new vid new instructions or and just different things we come out with you'll get notified right away and I want to make sure that I get you some good quality content and that we are all learning together Okay, that's what it's about. You guys have been teaching me things as well as me teaching you. So we are both learning together with each other. And I absolutely love that. Thank you for continuing to support me and coming out here. I really love you guys to death. All right. I got to take off now, but uh, hopefully we can get another vid going in another week. And I will see you then. All right. You guys take care. Keep on hacking, most importantly, please. Enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating. You all take care. Of it.